Hello there. So one of the really important things when it comes to glass painting is of course getting your paint in good condition, getting your palette well organized and get, getting your brushes so that they allow you to do the kind of painting that you want to do. And what I want to do with you over the next eight or nine minutes is show you how I get myself organized, how I get the, the palette worked up, the paint as I wanted and the brushes all quick and springy and responsive. So have, come on over to the light box and I'll show you what I do. Okay, so it's Monday morning and I haven't been painting since Friday when I left my palette. And um, I thought I'd sealed the leftover paint well, but I've just checked it and in fact this comes off very easily. So in fact I hadn't sealed it very well, so that's not good of me and it's not what you should do. Now, I leave my palette knife dirty because there's good paint on that which I can use as I'll show you in a moment. The first thing I'm going to do is take my hake and um, as you can see it's it's beautifully clean and also bone dry so the, the worst thing really to do is to plonk dunk the hake directly in the water don't do that just let it take a little bit of water at a time like that and let it take water as it needs it bit by bit and then what I'm going to do I'm going to take the lid off this get that out the way and now start working this leftover paint. And the reason for keeping this leftover paint as separate from your lump is that it allows the, the cover over the lump to be really well sealed because it won't spread. So you can see that's really well sealed, that will be fine. I probably won't need to work with that now because I've got enough paint here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of water and then I just work that water onto the palette and at the same time I get my, my hake fresh again. So at the same time, you can see there's paint coming onto the hake. Now what I don't do though, is I don't try rubbing my hake into this dark paint, because the last thing you want is a lot of dark paint on your hake, because then you have to wash it, and that's a waste of paint, it all goes down the drain. So the moment I think there's enough water on the palette to get mixing, which I think there is now, I'm going to take my knife, I'm just going to put a little bit of extra water on it. I'm going to hold this down just to make it stable. And I'm going to start grinding this leftover paint. Now that's a little bit dry because there's, it flakes off a bit. So I'm going to wet my knife a bit more. And what I'm going to be doing is just working up this leftover paint, pushing it to one side, and then making paint for an undercoat because I've got about four pieces of glass that I want to make an undercoat for. And then while they're drying, I'll turn the undercoating paint into paint that I can use for copy tracing. So I'll show you all that. But here we go. This is very quick, as you can see, because the, even though the paint was dry, the leftover paint was dry, it really doesn't take long to get it going again. A couple of minutes. A couple of minutes heavy grinding. Now the thing about the palette knife is you can see I'm really pushing down hard on it. It's no use sort of going like this or like that or ghastly noise. You've really got to crush down hard and use the full weight of your arm. You've got to put a lot of strength in it because you want to get the job done as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible. So there's no use being gentle about it. The, the palette knife is really what you use, of course, for heavy juicing, bashing the paint around, organizing it on your palette, pushing it around as I'm doing here getting it out the way because that paint there is beautiful now but it's too dark for my undercoat. So having done that, having scraped off that area, I'm going to take my hake again and start working this paint down here. And I'm still getting my hake back into shape from last week when it was when I left it and it's got dry and I left it very clean and it's got very dry. So I need to, you can see how paint is working its way up the hake now. And little bits of fluff there. Because I've got clean hands, I can just go in and get those bits off. Because I don't want them on the undercoat. So, a little bit, tiny bit more water. But I'm also scraping the water off. So I'm just getting the hairs of the hake to stick together. So that when it comes... For me to do an undercoat 
they hold together and paint just flows down onto the glass as I want it to. Now, getting ready, you can see how that big reservoir of leftover paint, I've now drawn, drawn some of it down in order to make paint that's good for an undercoating. And I'm just going to have a test of it because there's no point in, in a, jumping onto the piece of glass without knowing what the, the paint is really like. So let's see how, the, also you're testing the hake. You want to see if the, the hairs are going to hold together. So here goes greasy uh, light box, which also happens. Clean that. But it was a good colour. So now let's test again for the colour. And then also test that the hairs of the hake are sticking together in such a way that the undercoat goes on evenly. Now I can see a little hair on the brush, so I got rid of that. And here we go. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at how this is. Okay, maybe a little dry, but that's okay. I'll deal with that. Okay, that's a good colour for an undercoat. Well, there's no such thing as a good colour for an undercoat. It all depends on what you're using the undercoat for. But that's good enough for me because I will be copy tracing on top. So I'm, I've now got some pieces of glass over there. And what I'm going to do is just get them all with an undercoat on and then I'll move swiftly on to making some paint for copy tracing and testing that. So these should be pretty much clean. Let's have a look. Nope, still a little bit of muck around the edge and that's a little wet. So I'm just going to put that down, get this a quick clean again. And here we go. And that one's fine. So I get it out of the way. I won't touch it with my fingers because that would probably break the surface tension of the paint. And now I prepare some more paint for another undercoat. Load both sides of the hake. And then get ready to apply it. A little bit of grease at the end, but I'll work through that. That's fine. That one's fine. Push that out of the way. Clean. Get this off. Don't want that. That's not part of my test patch. That was just getting the excess water off the hake. A little bit more. And also squeeze it off at the same time. Squeeze off any excess. See how I'm dragging down a little bit more dark paint and then mixing it in, getting it up onto the hake so there aren't any uneven streaks that come down. So it's all evenly loaded as you can see there. All right, here we go. the light box and then go for the last one right now. So I'm reloading the hake both sides Good blend. Push it away. A little bit uneven at the 
edge, but I'll just blend that over. There we go. Okay, I'll clean this. Put my head down. And now what I want to do is just quickly mix up some copy tracing paint. And I, the reason I'm showing you this is that just within a couple of minutes of coming in from Friday to Monday, it's, if you sealed your paint, well I haven't sealed that reservoir very well, but I kept it separate from my main lump. And it's very, very quick to get going when you do things methodically and properly. And that's the important thing here. So I'm just remixing this reservoir of dark runny paint and that's always there for me to call on that's why I want to keep it nice and runny and available and then push it again to one side put that there put a little bit bit more water down with the hake just so that there's enough for me to call on to make some copy tracing paint. I'm also going to wet that. And then take a brush. And of course, one thing I forgot to do was put on my glasses. <laughs> so you can't see that, but I can't really see what I'm doing with my tracing brush. But let's just, let's just plow on with that. And here we go. I am not, I'm actually not going to be um, proposing to do some very fine delicate lines because I left my reading glasses off just now. So I cannot clearly see. It's not that it's a blur, but, but now you see from that undercoating paint, very quickly it's possible to make a big area of paint that if my eyesight were good enough would be good to trace with for maybe five or so minutes but all the time I was doing that I would be adding little drops of water to the, the tracing paint to keep it on the go. Now the thing is you've got to get it properly mixed like this and then one thing that's a good idea, having used a brush for mixing, is just to clean it. And although you can't see it, I'm going to flick this behind me to get it dry. And then I'm going to reload the brush again. So I've mixed the paint and then I've cleaned the brush and then I've reloaded it. Now I'm just going to get off any excess. And now this is a really, really daft thing because you probably, I don't have my glasses. But I'm just going to have a quick test to see what it's like. Okay, it's a nice medium brown. Again, you know, sometimes people ask, what's the right color for copy tracing paint? It depends on the color of the glass. It depends what else you're going to do afterwards. It depends on the lines you'll be painting. For what I'm going to do this morning, this is a good shade. I'm just going to come over here and do a bit on bare glass. And you can also see how this paint is really flowing so that's four five good lines out of one loading of the paint and that's another thing you're testing for not just the color but also that all this is so well mixed and so well mixed in your brush that there isn't an uneven distribution of water and paint such that the water being lighter pushes the paint down it all flows evenly and smoothly and I think that's pretty good given that I didn't have my glasses on. So at that point, I'm going to uh, call it a day for the moment and go and find them. And so that's just one last thought that if you've got them and you need them, then just put them on. All the best. See you another time. See you soon. Bye.